the motivation for the handmaids to begin this ministry was to be able to live out the gospel call. And it comes from our reparative charism. Right? It comes from a desire to, to enter into the wounds and there allow Christ to heal. And so for handmaids, this was, and it was a double mission um, always, because it was right knowing the reality of El Salvador and the pains of the people and the historical and political reality that's there, right? That was so, and, and the ties that it has with the United States um, in terms of the political and civil and civil war that, so to be present, to be, to be present there in a way that could bring about healing and transformation. The other part of that was also to be able to bring about that healing and transformation in the lives of people from the U.S. who could encounter, uh, could encounter humanity in, in a very real way. There's a material poverty, there's a spiritual poverty, and the idea here was to enter into the wounds of both of those poverties and allow kind of the encounter of those wounds to actually bring about a mutual healing. I'm going to say thank you, Gloria, for your faithfulness to God's mission of reparation through our volunteer house in San Salvador. We deeply appreciate your loving service to our El Salvadorian sisters and brothers, all your years of bridging friendships and lazos de amor between our two countries. Lazos de amor means bonds of love. Thank you, Lynette, for helping others become enriched during their time of service in San Salvador. Their volunteer experiences have changed their lives for good and forever. Hi, my name is Rick Jones and I'm recording this video from San Salvador where I've lived since 1990. Uh, Sister Leanne and Sister Juan invited me to talk to you all about the partnership that we've begun here in El Salvador. In 2018, the U.S. Agency for International Development sponsored a study about post-traumatic stress in El Salvador. Over 1,200 young people from fourth grade to 12th grade participated. And what they found was that 95% of these young people had at least one symptom of post-traumatic stress. And 45%, or nearly half, had five symptoms or more. Five symptoms or more is what you find of young people in the war in Ukraine. And so <clears throat> what I've learned over time is that time doesn't heal all wounds. It just gets worked out another way. It inhibits people from learning new things, from realizing their full human potential. So when Sister Leanne and Sister Juan were talking to me about their interest in really living out their charisms of the handmaids in terms of reparations, 
dialogue, building community and communion and social justice and restorative justice, I talk to them about people like Magdalena. And then at one point, Sister Leanne looked at me straight in the eye and said, would you be willing to organize those people to help us live out these charisms here in El Salvador? I stopped for a moment. It was really a grace-filled moment. And we decided to create a cooperative because of the values of a cooperative about democracy, participation, equality, and cooperation that are fostered by the cooperative. And that's really what this new initiative with the congregation is all about. We're walking together and we, our objectives include training leaders so that they can foster processes of personal and collective healing and empowerment in the communities in El Salvador, working with the organizations here so that they can create a culture of well-being and healing, uh, as well as creating networks of organizations that can work together to collaborate for greater impact in overcoming poverty, exclusion, and breaking the cycles of violence. Our mission is really about peace and reconciliation here in El Salvador. And I would invite you today to think about joining us and walking with us and the people of El Salvador uh, in living out these gospel values and really following our, our heart to become a greater and more collaborative community together. Thank you very much.